Welcome to Power Trader Radio's Trade Talk, the show designed exclusively for the savvy stock trader or investor of today. With the latest market analysis and strategies, stock market tips and tricks, investments with options and spread trades, near report, news, events, analysis, and research, we put it together for you. Hosted by Jim Cash, Julian Marchese, and Mark Eli. And now here are your co-hosts, Jim Cash and Mark Eli. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's episode of Power Trader Radio. Today is August 31st. It is 6 p.m. in Chicago. How are you doing today, Mark Eli? Great. 2011. Yes, it is 2011. All year. So, uh, folks, we have an absolutely dynamic show for you tonight. And uh, if you haven't already done so, you'll want to get over to Trade Caddy's website and get logged into the webinar. Uh, it'll be a live webinar with our special guest tonight, Steve Neeson. And uh, he's going to be going over candlestick charting and the importance of candlesticks in your trading activity. So if you haven't already done so, get over there uh, to Trade Caddy, T-R-A-D-E-C-A-D-D-I-E.com, and uh, look for the link that will uh, give you the registration for the webinar. Sign in and, uh, and get yourself uh, pulled up with the um, t uh, tonight's show. So we'll give people a few minutes to, uh, to get themselves oriented uh, on there. Uh, we've got people that are still coming into the chat. Um, uh, Mark, can you go ahead and post uh, the uh, in, in the chat what the link is so we can get all these folks over there too? Absolutely. And and for those who are uh, in the wrong chat, if you don't see any activity, that's because you're in the wrong place. So we clicked on start chat, start broadcast, right? Yep. It's already it's running. And we're ready, ready to go. go. We're hot. So uh, for those who, while we're getting in, did you see the picture of Steve Jobs? Oh, I did, uh, and I was really, um, really sad to see that. It was, uh, for those that haven't seen it, uh, TMZ uh, had a photo uh, earlier today of Steve Jobs, and i got to say he w looked as frail as a 100-year-old person, um, and uh, very sad to say that uh, he looks as bad as he does. And I just know from that, uh, I, I think he's got pancreatic cancer, doesn't he, he's got? Um, and, and from that other guy, um, she's an actor, and I can't remember off the top of my head what his name was, but he died of pancreatic cancer too. And uh, it's just a horribly painful death um, for these guys to be going through that. So, you know, my heart goes out to Steve and his family. Um, I can only imagine how bad it is what he's going through. And, uh, you know, our best wishes to all of them. In any event, um, we're still getting people uh, coming in to the chat over here. Folks, if you haven't already done so, uh, make sure you get logged into the um, webinar. Um, Mark, have you posted uh, in the chat yet? I am. Go ahead and uh, why don't you introduce the guest, and I'm going to go ahead and get that taken care of. All right, real good. Um, tonight we have with us Steve Neeson, and I want to make sure that, uh, that Steve is turned on here. Steve, are you with me? Yeah, I'm turned on. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. I well, didn't mean it that way, Steve. I know we're very casual here, but I okay. never get that extreme. <laughs> so, uh, but good. I'm glad you're on the, uh, on the show. I, I didn't hear you uh, chime in before. Uh, glad to have you tonight. Folks, for uh, those of you that are just joining us, let me just give you a brief bio. Um, Steve Neeson is uh, America's uh, founder, if you will, of Japanese candlesticks uh, in the 21st century. Um, Steve, uh, with that, I'm going to give you the mic and, and kind of give us a real brief overview of how you discovered them and what the importance of bringing them over here was. Okay. Um, f first of all, um, for those who want the handouts uh, for the session today, because I'll be making re references to them, for those in the conference room, you can see the, uh, the slide where we give the link. For those who are not, you can go to www learn from Steve Nissen, and that's N-I-S-O-N, learnfromstevenissen.com backslash or forward slash, whatever that is, PTR, as in Power Trader Radio. Uh, and uh, actually on one of the slides, actually slide number 19, which I'll go to uh, now, uh, it shows my, my uh, I'm just going to get to the slide here, uh, it shows the desk, my study desk, and these are just a sample of some of the Japanese books that I've had translated. And essentially what happened was back in the 1980s, I was working for a brokerage firm. And down the hall from me, this was in New York, 
and there was a Japanese broker down the hall from me, and she had Japanese clients. And she was trained. This is when the Nikkei was really zooming along in the 1980s. And um, she had clients she would deal with on, on the Nikkei. And I went into her office, and she had this book open. Uh, it's actually called the Golden Chart Book. I don't know if it's around anymore. But essentially, it was this voluminous chart book of all the major world markets plus all the Nikkei stocks. And uh, she had it opened, and they had a candlestick charts. Now, nobody in the West had known what they are, nor did I. And I said, what kind of chart is this? And she said, oh, this is the traditional method of charting in Japan used for generations, and they're called candlestick charts. And uh, that really piqued my curiosity. So at that time, uh, a week or two later, coincidentally, I ran to somebody, an American, who was going to Japan. And he happened to uh, be, um, he could translate from Japanese to English. So I told him to buy every book he could on candlesticks. And I paid him to do translations. He got, and these are just some of the books that I've had translated. Uh, and the middle portion here on the slide is actually the English of those, uh, uh, the translation portion of the, the books. And, uh, and as I was doing the research, now remember, there was not one candlestick chart anywhere in the Western world. This, the classic charting was the bar chart. As I was doing the research, my, my job at this brokerage firm was giving trade recommendations to the brokers. And back then, we had what's called the hoot and holler system. Remember, this was pre-email. Right. Uh, it was me and Lincoln at that time. Right. And uh, so you know, we, I had an open phone line. And I'd pick up the phone. And the brokers throughout the, uh, the offices, uh, I think it was just in the US. I don't know if it was around the world, would hear my trade recommendations. And as I was doing the research into the candlesticks, I didn't let people know about this. Uh, my trade recommendations became better and better because I was using the strategies based on what I was learning. And I actually uh, was the top analyst in our department, uh, not only in helping the traders get into trades early, and equally important, we'll look at this later as we progress in the uh, session, helping, them, helping the traders or the brokers um, lessening market risk for their clients. So this, to me, really reinforced the power and efficiency and the usefulness of candlestick charts. It, it really uh, uh, underpinned my drive to continue the research. And it really took like three years of research and analysis because the Japanese do everything by metaphors and analogies. So although I had the translated portions of the books, I had to figure out what they meant. <laughs> so I had to understand, I had to read about Japanese history and the military, cult and, the military and, and culture. And uh, so it was about a year for the translations, about a year or so for me to understand translations, and then about a year for me to write my first book back in the uh, late 1980s, uh, Japanese, Japanese Council Trying Techniques. And uh, from there, the floodgates opened, and all the trotting services uh, had candlesticks. And, and you get a royalty for every time we pull up a candlestick chart, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> You're going to be a yeah, rich yeah. man with that <laughs> charting activity. <laughs> uh, it's funny, funny story, Mark. You, you're right. Uh, my son Evan. It, it's funny because he's. He, it's not funny. It's it's a little scary actually. When I wrote my first book, I had mentioned that my newborn baby son, and we were thinking about calling him Candlesticks Nissen, and obviously kidding around with that. But that's in the forward. He's now 21. <laughs> so. Uh, so he's burning on both ends. He's burning. He's he sure is. He's burning in on on uh, both ends. That's for sure. Uh -huh. Now, Steve, are, are you uh, my, my wife when she... Is he your wife? No, no my, 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 my wife, when she heard uh, all about you, she goes, is he Japanese? Does he have a little bit of that Japanese in you? And i got to ask that question. In your genealogy, do you think you have any? No, no. I'm thinking, though, with all the popularity of candlesticks, thinking about changing my last name to N-I-S-S-A-N. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, uh, no Japanese. I'm... Uh, Old world. I think my grandfather came from like Russia or one of the, uh, the countries in that area, and there he was one of the immigrants back then. So I don't think we have any Japanese uh, background. Now, before you uh, you you uh, came up with uh, introducing Japanese candlesticks to the Western civilization, there was open, high, low, close, and point and figures, and uh, like you like you pointed out, people were um, using those, but 
uh, in my opinion, they just didn't provide the information that Gap, uh, that Candlesticks offers. You agree with that, right? You, you, the profit. You're the profit. I look at you as one of the profits of this industry. Technical analysis. There are a few, and you are definitely one. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, one of the great things, and we'll go to slide number six now, again, for those who have the handouts. And once again, if you don't, you could just go to that link um, that we gave before, the uh, Learn from Steve Nissen backslash or forward slash PTR. And uh, I should spend a couple of minutes kind of laying the foundation of why the candlesticks are, are so popular and, and why they work so well. Of course, nothing is 100%. Um, you know, the Japanese have a wonderful proverb. They say even monkeys fall from trees. <laughs> so nothing is 100%. And when we uh, give our trading education, we always talk about protective stops because there's always a price that should say you're wrong. But uh, the quote I have here, and I'll just read it for those who are not visually seeing this. Um, and I got this from one of the many Japanese books I had translated. It says, American charts tend to take single bars that have little meaning by themselves. Japanese analysis is on a more micro scale. This is the important part. And the psychological analysis of the investor, or I'd throw in, you know, or trader, becomes an important factor. So what the candlesticks do when you know how to use them correctly is let you understand the psychology uh, of the current market conditions, whether it's the bulls or the bears that are in control. And you're shown on the next slide, number seven, uh, I love this quote by uh, Bernard Baruch, what's important are not the events themselves, but the market's reaction to these events or those events. And this brings out a very, very important point. I mean, I, I have an MBA in finance and investments, and I certainly believe in the fundamentals. And I think as you go longer term, the fundamentals become more important. But as you telescope, as you shrink down your time horizon, whether it's a few weeks or, or to me, you know, even a few months, we have to really be concerned about the psychological component of the market. You know, one of the questions I'm asked a lot is, oh, do you follow the fundamentals? And I do, but not so much because of uh, the news itself. I like to see, you know, relaying, going back to this quote here by Baruch, how the market reacts to the news. If we have supposedly a bullish news report, let's say CPI or, you know, unemployment, and the market you're looking at normally should rally on that news and it doesn't, you know, what is that telling you about the emotional state of that market? If it's not going up on good news, what does it mean? <laughs> What's going to happen on bad news? So in my opinion, some, uh, I, uh, I came across this somewhere. It's not Japanese. It's one of the few non-Japanese quotes I use or proverbs. An ounce of emotion can be worth a pound of facts. So what the candlesticks do is let you gaze, gauge the emotionalism in the market. And you, know, you had made reference to the bar chart. Mark, and with that in mind, we can see slide number eight, where we have a traditional bar chart. And it has open, high, low, and close. And what I've done on the next slide, slide number nine, is taking that same information and converting it into a candlestick chart. It's now, to me, the, from two ahead, what's that? Three D. What's that? It's like the equivalent of going from 2D to 3D. Exactly, exactly. And it's not only visually stimulating, it's you know, visually attentive, uh, grabs your attention visually, but you get reams of more visual information because the way the candlestick line is, is drawn. And we'll go through that in a minute or two, I'm sure. But just as a heads up, the Japanese used to use the bar chart. All right? they, they convert to candle charts probably about towards the 1870s. There's a lot of misinformation about out there about the candlesticks uh, starting three or four hundred years ago. That is not true. Uh, candlesticks probably started in about the 1870s, but that was about 30 or 40 years before our bar charts started. But the Japanese used to use bar charts, and in the 1870s they converted to candlestick charts uh, because it gives you just so much more information. You know, as Academically, the United States has been falling farther and farther behind in its academic scores in elementary and high school. Yet Asia and the foreign countries are doing better in safety uh, skills and mathematics, and they they equate that to their their orientation to like you're doing right now the uh, candlesticks more 3D, deeper analysis. For instance, 
Japanese have uh, and Chinese have um, very nice handwriting. Uh, their, their writing skills don't use. There's a simplified Chinese and a uh, complex Chinese, and I think Japan, uh, the little island off the side. I think it didn't it. It evolved the uh, the written language arts into a more of a an art form where it involves deeper communication inside the uh, writing style itself. Uh, let me rephrase that. <laughs> I, I was at UMR, University of Missouri Rolla, and we had a. Oop, we got to go to break. We'll uh, be right back. Oh, we'll be right back in just a moment. Stay tuned. Power Trader Radio will return in a moment. Whether you're an options trader or a day trader, check out the one and only Options Chain Wizard. It's a revolutionary tool that provides an immediate shopping cart of option cards for any stock you choose. To work in tandem with the Options Chain Wizard is ARI, also known as the Analysis Research Index, a unique stock trend prediction tool that scores a specific stock based on technical, fundamental, and sentimental analysis. It reduces all the research down to a single 30-point score, making your trading process that much faster and more efficient. TradeCaddy also provides over 60 education videos available online and certified instructors ready to mentor you via webinars. TradeCaddy offers a one-stop shop for all your trading needs. So go to TradeCaddy.com today and take advantage of their Monte Carlo introductory offer for a limited time. The quest for simplicity is the holy grail of invention. Steve Nissen has brought the simple logic and illuminating arts of Japanese candlesticks to the Western world. For years, investors and traders from around the world have benefited from his expertise using candle charts without knowing who was responsible for this technique. We continue now with the founder himself, Steve Nissen. Uh, this is Mark back with Power Trader Radio, and thanks for uh, listening. We're here with Steve Nissen. And uh, Steve, I, I notice a lot of people have a hard time with your name. They say Nissan, 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 uh, but it's Nissen, right? Right. It's like Nixon, but without with the S instead of the X. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, as I was saying uh, before we broke to break, uh, we uh, in chemistry there is a Fisher projection which takes chemical models and lays them out in 2D. But you do not appreciate the chemical structures and still, until you lie it into a, a 3D model. And, and that's what candlesticks do. They give you more depth, more information in a quick, fast, easy, and interpretable thing. And they're really, after you learn your method, Steve, you're, they're intuitive and, and geniusly laid out. Um, how did you, uh, how did you uh, when you first started to approach this and you started uh, doing your, uh, writing your book, how did you know where to begin? How did you know how to define uh, what a wick, excuse me, what a shadow was, and then go in and, and, and talk about the body? How did you know how to approach it that way? Well, uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but it was, I wanted to throw your, show this slide because it's just a, so apropos of what you mentioned before about school overseas and stuff like that. And I happen to have a slide here, number 12, and uh, this aspect, and then I'll you know get to your question, Mark. Um, about the candlesticks and how simple they are. Um, I got this email from a teacher actually in New Jersey where I live and it says we have recently won the state championship for the stock market game. Your materials have been instrumental in our school success. And I, I thought this was truly fascinating because I mean if you think about it, I mean these were high school students, all right? And with all the things they're distracted from, from basketball games and proms to part-time jobs and hanging out with their friends, and the candlestick strategies were so simple to understand that they won the championship. So my feeling is imagine the impact that the candles can have on the average trader or investor who's really serious about pulling in good results from the market. And it's really interesting because the candlesticks are so simple that high school students use them. But uh, on slide number 13, I'm just showing some of the um, companies I worked at, uh, you know, as an advisor: Fidelity, Goldman, J.P. Morgan, Citadel, a huge hedge fund. Uh, I was asked to speak at the Federal Reserve Bank, the World Bank, uh, Nasdaq, and NYC Market Makers. And the only reason I wanted to bring that out is 
the candlesticks are really simple enough for high school students to use, but powerful enough for the top institutional traders to use. So it's uh, it's a it's a really great uh, tool uh, as another uh, weapon in uh, in the uh, someone's trading arsenal. But getting back to your uh, question, Mark, uh, one of the things that I had to well, one of my major goals when I was doing the research, I, I knew this was so valuable, I had to get the information out there. My true love, I trade, but my real true love is education. That's what I really like doing. So uh, I wanted to make this topic not only uh, informative as far as technical analysis is concerned, I wanted to make it really, really interesting. So one of my major goals was not only giving the details about the candlesticks and how they're constructed, but a little history behind them. And one of the things I do in all my seminars and in my books uh, is, for example, at the beginning of each seminar, I'll have an appropriate Japanese proverb. And actually, that's something the press picked on early, the Japanese proverbs, and that gave <laughs> the, uh, the book a lot of publicity. Uh, but one of the things I had to decide is, do I, get, do I keep the names Japanese? So in other words, the, uh, the real name is a candlestick signal called the hammer. The actual name of a hammer in Japanese is Takori, T-A-K-U-R-I. And so I had to decide, do I keep it as a Japanese name or do I use the English translations? And my thinking was, this was so new to the Western world, because remember, it's not only in America that I was revealing the candlesticks to, but it was also uh, the non-Asian um, community, uh, Europe and so forth. Uh, so I was thinking that, okay, n they have to learn the new concepts, and if they had to remember new terms, new Japanese terms, I think it would just be an extra step in the mental process that they really didn't need to, to take. So one of my early decisions was to uh, use all the American translations of the, uh, the Japanese, uh, Japanese terms. And... Uh, uh, it was. It was. I loved doing it. It was, a, it was a real challenge, but I loved delving into the history, relating the history to the Japanese, to the uh, to the candlesticks and so forth. Um, I, I, I'm looking at your uh, impressive uh, all the businesses you work with: J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Fidelity. For those who are not in the uh, presentation, video presentation, and those listening on the radio waves, Steve has posted. A PowerPoint presentation where he's worked with these different organizations, and one of them is the World Bank, uh, and also the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve System. Um, Steve, did you do personal classes for them? And, and <laughs> no, what it was fascinating. I, I spoke to the Fed, and I essentially I didn't say it this way, but I said, "What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> I, you know, why am I doing a seminar to the Fed?" On candlesticks, and what was fascinating is what they told me, because I was working with institutions for years, and they told me so many institutional traders were using candlesticks now, they wanted to know what the institutional traders were looking at. Wow. You know, I think perhaps, uh, Steve, what you need to do now is to uh, get over to the White House and, and have <laughs> all of the government offices start using candle charts. Because, yeah. You know, if they were to do that and plot the employment reports, uh -huh. um, they clearly see what everybody on the street sees, and that is that nothing's changing. Well, uh, I'm, I'm just waiting to, for Benaki to be in front of the uh, the Congress and say, oh, my goodness, we have a hammer. I have to ease. <laughs> yeah, we have a hammer on employment. <laughs> yeah, hammer on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's coming out on Friday, by the way, so everybody just look at your charts. It's probably going to be a doji up on the top, and it's going <laughs> to slam the market. But anyway, yeah. okay, I digress. Um, but uh, interestingly, uh, Stephen, when I was on the floor uh, at the Mercantile Exchange back in, oh, I think it was 1988, 89, uh, I was first introduced uh, to candle, uh, candle sticks and candle charts. Uh, interestingly enough, we were not allowed to have computers on the floor. So we actually had to do this by hand right. um, and draw all these things. And we did it on little trading cards. Uh, we would actually draw the charts on, the, on our trading cards, or perhaps we would cut part of the page of the of bar chart book and, and we would draw them in. One of the most unique things that I found personally about the uh, candle uh, sticks is the ability to see at a glance what the overall direction of the market is because of the, the, the nature, as you're showing on these slides here, because the bodies are, are shown vividly. Um, talk to us a little bit about the importance of that third dimension and why candlesticks 
actually reveal more of the story of the, uh, the current action. So yeah, I'll be glad to. And, and Mark, you mentioned you used to have to draw the candles by line. Now remember, when I was doing the research into candlesticks, and by the way, and I'm sure many of the audience already picked this up, sometimes I refer to them as candlesticks, and sometimes I refer to them as candles. You know, they mean the same thing. Uh, but when, when I was doing my research, there were no charting services that had candlesticks, so I had to draw all my charts by hand. So it was a real way to get a, a, a great feeling for you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, the market's message. Uh, but anyway, let's, we'll, we'll go over what I, what I refer to as the anatomy of a candlestick line. And uh, just as a heads up, you know, the candlestick lines are very easy to draw. There's many patterns. It's easy to, you can go to the web and find you know, the definition of a hammer or a shooting star. That is not the important part of correctly using candlesticks. The correct way, uh, um, way to use them is know how to apply them. You could have a particular candlestick signal, and we'll look at this a little bit later, and at times, say it's a bullish, potentially bullish candlestick signals, a signal, at times you should be thinking about using it to buy, but other times you should not be buying on the signal. You know, buying and selling on every candlestick signal is like the Japanese would say, uh, if I, there's another good proverb, let me see if I remember, like leaning a ladder against the clouds. Okay, nothing substantial. So we're going to go over the construction of the candlestick line now, and we'll look at some nuances and some common mistakes a little bit later on. But um, here, these are going to be uh, your oars <laughs> when you're crossing in the boat. Uh, so the candlestick line is made of two components. There's a rectangular portion, and by the way, for those who have access to the handouts, we are now looking at slide number 10. Okay, the rectangular portion is called the real body, and the real body could be black or white. And the real body is the measurement or the visual gauge be, uh, between the relationship between the open, opening and the close. If the close is higher than the open, as it is on your left, we have a white real body. If the close is under the open, we have a black real body. The highs and the lows, and you referred to this before, uh, Mark, the top of the the high is called the upper shadow. Some traders will refer to them as a wick, which is you know what the Japanese also refer to them as, either a shadow or a wick or a wick. So the top of the upper shadow is the high of the session, and the bottom of the lower shadow is the low of the session. And that is true whether it's a white or black real body. Now some of your charting packages, instead of a white real body, might be green, and instead of black might be a red real body. But as long as you understand the concept, that depending on the color of the real body, the close is higher than the open or under the open, and we have very valuable information. And as any market where you have open, high, low, and close, and any time frame, you could use candlestick charts. I use it for my own retirement portfolio. All right, I use it for my own trading. I look at daily and intraday charts. So no matter what markets, no matter what time frame your listeners uh, trade, and We'll talk about using these in options in a couple of minutes. Uh, you could use candlesticks, so it's really important to keep in the back of your mind before we you know, move forward on this. Um, it, you mentioned that people can change the colors nowadays, but when you first started uh, drawing these out, uh, <laughs> did you, uh, as a software program started to come into play that would replace your drawing into a program, do you work with a programmer to program at, or did somebody else just do that on their own? No, what happened was, that actually the very first thing in the Western candlestick charts is I did a little article in a financial magazine, like a two-page article. And this was before my book came out, and that, that, that actually incentivized me to do the book because it was such, a, uh, such worldwide interest in that little two-page article that I said, well, I'm really onto something here. Uh, but anyway, the reason I mention that is because once that article came out, there was a few charting services that had candlestick charts on their charts. All right, and then what happened was the other charting services to keep up with the other ones <laughs> had candlestick charts. So I didn't have to have a programmer do it. Uh, the charting services picked it up. A few of the charting services picked it up right away because what from what I understand, it's really easy to program. It's right. you know open, high, low, and close. The same information you have as in the bar chart. It just drawn a little bit differently. And boy, that was so great because then I could pull up a chart and uh, you know, I didn't have to draw it by hand. I could have a candlestick chart. So uh, it was a real uh, time saver. And do you ever get a phone call from a programmer or two that says, Steve, I, I, 
you, how can I evolve this a little bit? <laughs> well, actually, we recently uh, developed what we call Nissan Candle Scanner. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it's candle scanning software that allows uh, any traders or investors to go through all the markets, any markets. They can go through the S&P 500 and find 28 of my favorite candlestick signals automatically. So that was a big project. I worked with the programmer actually in Israel uh, on that. And that's been really, really popular because one of the, you know, the three major challenges with trading, one, it's when to buy, two, when to sell, and the third one is how to get a watch list of markets. So by using our NIST, and I use, and I'll show you how I set my own trades in a little bit, uh, but I use the NIST and Camel Scanner, and what traders will do with the Camel Scanner is say you, you scan the 500 S&P markets, and then you may have maybe 20 or so or 15 with a bullish hammer. And then you could zero in on that and see if that hammer is ho holding a support area. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at that later, actually, you know, talking about a hammer as a potential buying opportunity. Uh, but that's, you know, the reason I mentioned that, Mark, is because you, you, you asked about uh, soft programming and all that. But that's, that's the only thing I've done with a programmer is how can people developing the scanning software. How can people find out more about that software? Uh, you can actually contact in one of the slides, and actually I'm going to show it. Let me just uh, show it now very, very quickly, and uh, then I'll read it. Uh, is uh, uh, They can contact Paul, okay, uh, Paul at CandleCharts.com, P-A-U-L at CandleCharts.com, and be sure to mention Power Trader Radio, you know, for special pricing, because I told Paul he's my director of marketing, uh, director of business development, uh, to give special, you know, preference to people from uh, PTR. Okay, thank you for that. Right. Uh, now you were um, again. That's uh, you. You can also find it on your website. I think uh, Jim just found it. Right. Don't don't get anything from my website if you, if again because you're going to be paying full retail price for that. Got it. <laughs> and we don't want your listeners to do that. So thank you. Uh, right. Be sure to contact Paul. You know because I told him actually for the candle scanner, what we're going to do is uh, if anybody called about it because we have an annual service in a lifetime to let your listeners get the lifetime service for the price of an annual service. So don't order from the website. <laughs> as far as the, um, going back to the academics, uh -huh. as, as you um, throughout time, I'm sure there have been several people who have approached you to build more formal classes uh, that in the academic where you actually get continuing education credits or maybe even possibly college credits. Mm -hmm. is, is, your, um, is that something that you you see uh, valuable as, as it relates to candlesticks. Do you think candlesticks can be included or should be included in a continuing education thing for some sort of accountants or some sort of uh, um, finance advisor? Yeah, well, in, in, I've, I've spoken at um, colleges, Baruch College and Cornell and you know, on the financial course. I'm not giving full, uh, you know, uh, full courses, but I, was, is, I came in as a guest speaker. Uh, but it's fascinating. Uh, it's funny you bring that up, Mark, because about three weeks ago, I went into our local um, store. It was a restaurant, uh, like a shop. Uh, it was actually a deli, I think. And the guy behind the counter is a young kid, and he says, are you Steve Nissen? <laughs> and I, sa I said, yeah. He says, I'm in, I forgot the name of the college. He says, we're, we're, we're learning your stuff at my college and, my, and our finance course. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, wow. Uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting, yeah. So it and if you were, to, you have how many books? You've got. I actually have your uh, Japanese candlestick charting uh, in hardback. I love mm -hmm. that book, by the way. I recommend anybody go to Amazon or through any special channel that Steve or Paul have got set up to buy that wonderful book. And I recommend it in hardback because it fits nicely in my library, and I, I reference it all the time. But how many other books have you written? I have two other books. Um, one's called The Candlestick Course. It's kind of a Q&A book, testing knowledge book. And the other one's called Beyond Candlesticks. And the only caveat, I mean, the books are great references, uh, but the books were really written, although the can, the, my major book, the first book, Japanese Candlestick Trying Techniques, has a copyright of 2001. It was really written in 1991, and we just re revised it with new charts, but I didn't change any text. So the books really are, you know, going on. The, the techniques are timeless. It really doesn't matter. But all my newest information is really on our video resources. Um, but the books are great, you know, to have as as a uh, basic reference guide. But I've I've done three books. Now, uh, Steve, it's Jim Cash here. Um, 
I wanted to ask you, uh, and we may be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves uh, on this question here, but uh, probably the most uh, common thing that I hear is, what's the most important uh, candlestick pattern to look for? Um, and I have my own set of answers, uh, but I'd like to hear from the master, uh, you know, so that uh, our folks can get some answers to that question. The, name the top three uh, pattern, uh, you know, of candlestick formation that you would look for. Okay, uh, I wish it was that simple. <laughs> I have what I call 28 of my favorite candlestick signals. Uh, and let me, I think before we do that, let me just show the, how we use the candlestick signal. And then I'll show one of the important ones, the doji. Uh, and then go over how to use it and then some of the misuses about it. And then uh, uh, I'll get back to your, your question again about the more important can, candle signals because you can't, as I mentioned before, you shouldn't lo look at candlestick signals in isolation. But let me, let me do this first, going over uh, the, what the Japanese, I'm looking at slide number 14 now, uh, what the Japanese call the essence of the price movement, the real body. So on the left side, we have a tall white real body. And who's in charge there? Well, obviously the bulls. And you know, for those who are fairly new to candles, uh, just to refresh your memory, the white real body means the opening is down here. I'm pointing to the bottom of the white real body, the rectangular portion. And the closing is up here. I'm pointing to the top of the rectangular portion. So obviously the bulls are in control. And with a black real body, the, the bears are in control. Uh, the bears are in control because the closing is right near the opening. Uh, the closing is under the opening. Click on your pointer, Steve. Yeah, I'm trying to make it uh, normal. There we go. Okay. Yeah, actually, I'm trying to advance the slide, and when the when you have a pointer on there, it doesn't do that. There we go. So the bears are in uh, bears are in control here. Now, I think you know you, uh, while you're doing that, mm -hmm. uh, it's day and night, and I I tied Japan to China because. Their uh, Chinese simplified uh, writing style, it was a reference to the ground, above ground and below ground. So if you look at the complex characters of China, they reference ground. In Japan, you notice it's day and night. So day, you said, is white, is bullish, and black is night, uh, excuse me, day, white, bullish, black, bearish, right? Right, right. That, and actually in, in Japan, or uh, it's yin and yang, they call these yin lines, oh. yin and yang. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, as now, now that I have this down here, uh, as far as being able to advance the slides, uh, this is really what underpins the power and the potency of candlestick charts, uh, because it gives you twice the information as a traditional bar chart. The candlesticks, like a bar chart, will show you the price. But this is the important part. The candles reveal the force of the current move. So we saw on the prior slide, a tall white real body shows the bulls are in charge. A long black real body shows the bears are in charge. Now we get to a session like this. We're looking at slide number 16 now. And we have a line, for those in the audio world, we have a line that looks like a, a cross. There's a vertical line, and then there's just a horizontal line. And who's in control here? And this session is referred to as a doji. And it's a session where the opening and closing are the same. And once again, this could be on a 10-minute chart. It could be a daily chart. It could be a weekly chart. And with a doji, the market is in balance between the bulls and the bears. And the doji is one of my favorite, uh, 28 favorite candlestick signals. And it's a good way for those who are new to candles to really you know, get familiar with them. Uh, you can do a lot of things with the doji. First of all, the doji can help you avoid bad trades, what we call safety first trading. And I had this cartoon made up. I work with a, a cartoonist. So on slide number 17, you see this guy rowing. And uh, in front of him, there's a sign that says profits. And behind him, there's a sign that says losses. And he's saying, I'm losing ground. And the concept here is that it's not only how much you make trading and investing, but how much you don't lose. Because at the end of the day, it's all added together. And by understanding even the basics 
and that's what we're doing here, the basics of candlesticks, it'll help you avoid potentially losing trade. So for example, here uh, in the iShares, this happens to be one of the markets I follow, the Dow Jones Transfer Report, and we're looking at slide number 18 now, and uh, this is absolutely classic. The market made a new high in early July, but it, made, it broke above a resistance area, which is shown by the dashed blue line. Now, normally with a bar chart, if you close above a resistance line, let's buy it, right? Although here the market did get above a, a strong resistance area, it did it via a doji. That to me is a warning sign. Now, it doesn't mean the market's going to sell off. I would never sell short or do a bearish option trade just because there's a doji. All right, if there's a new high close for the move like this, and even though it's a doji, to me, it would be time to lock in profits. If I'm flat, in other words, I don't have a position on, I would not be buying it here because it's a doji. I like to see tall, white, or in this case, in this chart, green candles on high volume. You know, we don't have time to uh, look at my favorite Western indicators. I've been using Western Technical since 1974. And uh, just as I have my favorite candle signals, I have my favorite Western indicators as well, uh, because one of the beautiful parts about candlesticks is because it, they use open, high, low, and close, as does the bar chart, you could use all Western indicators on your candlestick charts. So here is an, a great recent example where the market made a new high, but by understanding that the doji, the Japanese would say with the doji, the market's tired, I'd be very reluctant about buying up here. And knowing not to buy up there could have saved a lot of money. In fact, one of the seminars I did years ago for one of the institutions, I used to work with a lot of proprietary traders. Uh, those are traders who uh, trade with the firm's money. And uh, the head of the department said, Steve, I want you to teach my traders here about negative selection. And I said, what do you mean by negative s uh, selection? He said, tell them what not to do, <laughs> which, which makes a lot of sense. So, uh, you know, we... we uh, Knowing what not to do could be just as important as knowing what to do. Steve, this is Mark again. Hey, uh, for those who uh, are attending in radio only, the charts are accessible by going to um, Steve. Can you give that uh, URL? Sure. Triple W. Learn from Steve Nissen, and that's N I S O N. So it's Learn from Steve Nissen uh, forward slash or the one under the question mark or backslash uh, P. TR for Power Trader Radio, so it's PTR, and actually we hooked, we set it up so once you register. And by the way, very important to to note, I should have said this before, you'll give us your email and your contact information. That is kept strictly confidential. All right, as soon as you fill that out, you will get an uh, an email with the handouts as well as a new uh, as well as a brochure. We have the four common mistakes most traders make with candlestick charts. But rest assured, uh, when you fill that out. You, we do not give out your information to anybody else. So, uh, yeah, it'd be really good. To, it's important so you could follow along with the slides. Now, the last question for those who are paying attention, how many dojis do you see in this chart? Okay. <laughs> well, let me give you a little. There, You get to a point where I'm going to do a spotlight here, where like something, actually, let me do, do the arrow. Um, let me, yeah, let me do an arrow. Okay, so something like this. Whoops. Here we go. Something like this, when you have a real body that is so small, I would equate that to being similar to a doji. So a strict definition of a doji would be where there's no real body. So this would be a strict, I'm going to do this here on the right side here. That's a strict doji. Also, there's, so, there's one on the bottom. And right, right. And by the way, again, do, do not, I shouldn't say again, do not trade in a lim limited information here because you will get burnt with the candlesticks. We have resources much more detailed. And the reason I mention that now is because doji usually work better calling tops than bottoms. So here we have a doji and a downtrend. To me, I would not view that as a potentially bullish signal. I would, I would not be buying on that doji. There, there are so many important nuances with the candles. I could spend a good half hour, 45 minutes in doji. While here, you see the short-term rally before the doji, the little rally we had for three or four days before. So that was a little bit of a rally. The doji is telling us the rally is running out of steam, making the market vulnerable to a correction. Now, a doji, one of the common mistakes. Steve, is we got a break for a commercial. Okay, sure. We're going to come okay. back, and you're going to explain the doji. Okay. The doji, okay.
Stay tuned. Power Trader Radio will return in a moment. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. If we wish to make it louder, we will bring up the volume. If we wish to make it softer, we will tune it to a whisper. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We can roll the image. Make it flutter. We can change the focus to a soft blur. Or sharpen it to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit quietly and we will control all that you see and hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your television set. Candlesticks are not just for burning the midnight oil. Go to learnfromstevenisson.com forward slash PTR and learn from the person who revealed candles to the Western world on how to correctly use them to make money and decrease market risk. Go to learnfromstevenisson.com forward slash PTR. Now, Power Trader Radio continues on PowerTraderRadio.com. And folks, this is Jim Cash. We are back from the Outer Limits, uh, and we are being presented uh, with uh, the doji from Steve Nissen. Steve, continue on for us on the importance of a doji. Okay, thanks. And I started to say that uh, one of the common mistakes is that people will see a doji because it's just so easy to visually pick up and to think that immediately the market is going to sell off. Uh, that, that's not true. Um, in fact, one of the seminars I did at another institution, uh, uh, one of the traders wrote back, you, you write about a little knowledge being a dangerous thing. We're all running around here shouting doji, doji, doji. A doji ch changes a trend uh, from up to neutral. It doesn't change it from up to down. And when we're trading or investing, we, are, we want the probabilities on our side. So if you have a doji, the odds are increased that the market is going to reverse and sell off, but it's not 100%. As you know, I mentioned before, not all candlestick signals are going to work all the time. But by seeing a doji, we know that we have, if you're thinking of, for whatever reason, taking some profits or doing a bearish option trade, uh, or uh, you know, and this is one of the ways we'll look at later on, but you could actually use candlestick signals to know when to protect your portfolio. So if I saw this doji here at the arrow where it says new high, let's buy, I might do a protective put or a covered call to protect my, um, my equity position. So uh, doji are a great, uh, great simple tool when you know how to use them correctly. And, uh, uh, and this is the beauty of the candlesticks. They, they make sense. We can see visually that the market is a bal in the balance between the bulls and the bears. What does that mean? It's at a point of indecision. But what, what markets can use candlesticks? Every market that has an open, high, low, and close. In fact, uh, the charts that I have in the handouts, almost all of them don't have markets on them. I hid the markets because of the universality of candlesticks. I want to make it very clear that candles work in all markets and all time frames. And the only reason I have this one on here, the, the, the Dow Jones Transport, is because it's a recent market I want to discuss, but it works in all markets and all time frames. As I mentioned before, I use it for my own trading, looking at daily or even 60-minute charts, but I use it for my own retirement account. I got out of the market back in June of 08. I got back into the market of March of 09. I'm still you know, in the market. I scale back a little bit, but I use candlesticks and Western indicators you know, because uh, as I mentioned before, it's not only candlesticks, but Western indicators that are important, and I like combining both of them. We're just focusing on candles. So I use it for everything from uh, trading to longer-term investing, and that's what uh, our, our, um, our uh, database, our clients do. How can options traders use candlesticks? Yeah, you know, one of the great things about the candles is that you could use candlesticks to time your option trades. And in fact, we have a seminar coming up. I'll detail that a little bit later, but let me get to a particular slide here. And again, just bear with me as I uh, 
get rid of the arrow here so I could advance the Put slide to little too. X on that arrow will go away. Right. Right. Okay. And we're going to go to slide number 20. We're going to slide number 29, folks. And uh, for those who are fairly new to options, uh, just to kind of refresh your memory, options are wonderful. Uh, I know a large percentage of the audience are already familiar with options, but you have high leverage. You can control risk. Essentially, just your premium is at risk. You can trade, how else can you trade Google right, or Apple without options? Very easy to short. Uh, you can protect your portfolio and so forth. And so there are a lot of benefits to options. And I actually, it was interesting, back in the early 90s, uh, I was an, a technical analyst. This is before channels really took off, and that was my full focus. But I, would, I was doing seminars in technical analysis and seminars on options. And about a year ago, I'm thinking to myself, the candles have so many benefits. You get the early reversal signals with the candlesticks. You can avoid bad trades. Why not combine the advantages of candlesticks as the foundation for option trading. So let me show you an example of how this works in the real world. And again, you know, uh, you don't see a slot, uh, uh, the name of the market up here, but I'm sure most of you guess it's Google. <laughs> but uh, once again, I don't want you to be distracted by what market it is because it doesn't matter what market. Right. Now, so here we have, this is called a hammer, and we'll have a slide on this a little bit later of what uh, the hammer looks like. But essentially, it's a very long, and I'm going to get the arrow on here, it's a very long lower shadow candlestick. And we could see that the market sold off and then rallied to close at the highs of the session. All right? So we could get a potential buying spy signal at the hammer, and that's a good buying signal because it's actually confirming a support area. I, I showed with the line there. Uh, so the market is at 395. So we could uh, buy an at the money call, theoretically valued $11.30. And we would, could exit at this doji that I just circled. And that's 13 days later. And with the market around 447. So the 400 call theoretically would be worth $47.50. Uh, there are reasons beyond the scope of the session why I would not exit on this first doji. Okay? Uh, I would exit on the second one. Now, so that's doing the trade based on the candlestick signals. Now, for those who are uh, familiar with Western technicals, there is a something called a MACD, and that's on the bottom of the uh, uh, of the slide. And it's not important to know, you know, what what the MACD is, but it's a it's a Western indicator, and most Western indicators are lagging indicators. You need days and days worth of data. With the candlesticks, it's happening real time. Right. So the MACD, the way it, it works is that when you have a crossover, that becomes a potential buy signal. And we would have gotten, if we were using the MACD to buy, we would have gotten our buy signal over here. So that would be scenario two. So if we're buying on the MACD, we do an at the money. Uh, the market's at 418. We do an at the money, 420 call, theoretical value 1345. If we exited, use the candles to exit on that doji, the 420 call would be theoretically worth 3120. 31 a nice return, you know, we have a 132% um, return based on, on that. But if we compare the candlesticks, buying on the candlestick, buying on the hammer compared to buying on the MACD, we generated over twice the profit. And this is how savvy option traders can use uh, candlesticks for their option trading and also for portfolio protection. Okay, one of our traders said being able to employ some real, uh, some defensive timing measures really reduces my anxiety. So you have a market like this and it's holding the highs fairly well, but you're getting a series of doji. Okay, this is telling me the market is at a point of indecision. We're also going from higher highs to lower high, we're going from higher highs to the same highs, so the market's starting to roll over. This is a great time to protect your position with either a protective put or a covered call. Now, the, I noticed there, ironically, there's a Fibonacci number there. There's that five. You've had five up days, then you had a uh, the stagnation at the top. Uh, do you? What do you do for Fibonacci, or do you even 
uh, consider that. Okay, I look at Fibonacci in the Forex market because it's really popular there. In the non-Forex markets like stocks and so forth, I'll look at 50% corrections, uh, which is also a Fibonacci number, but I normally won't look at 38 or 62%, percent just rounding off. Uh, but you bring out a really great point, Mark, uh, and this is something that I want to really strongly emphasize to the listeners out there is no matter what your favorite Western indicator is, stay with it and then add the candlesticks as your final confirmation. So let's say you look at FIB retracements and you're at a 61.8% retracement and the market has a bullish hammer. You have confirmation, you have east-west confirmation and that increases the likelihood of indeed the market turning around. So it doesn't matter if you look at volume or moving averages or stochastics. Uh, I like basic horizontal support and resistance lines. Just stay, you know, just uh, stay with it. And one of the things I should point out as long as we're talking about options is one of the things that we're going to be doing uh, when they register at the learn from Steve Nissen, uh, dot com backslash PTR is they're going to be entered into a raffle. I'm doing a two-day option seminar. And it's going to be both live and simulcast. It's going to be here in New Jersey, but it's going to be simulcast. And uh, so we're going to be, uh, when they register for the backslash PTR, they are automatically um, entered into a raffle for a free seat uh, to this uh, seminar. So I kind of wanted to do it, mention that little bonus for your listeners. In three, uh, three minutes, we're going to break. Uh, but uh, in our second hour, we're going to bring in uh, Frank from Stock Guy 22 who is going to uh, represent uh, day traders and swing traders and their experiences with uh, using uh, candle uh, starts and uh, candle decades. And then we're going to also include Julian Marquis, a 15-year-old prodigy, who uh, has used them and learned them, and uh, he's going to give his testimony why uh, Steve is the man, why he brought financial success to young generation as well as the most experienced generation that we live in, right, Jim? Jim, Jim and I, we, uh, we're a little bit younger than you, Steve, but we're at the same age. But we're at the outer end limit of uh, the young folks. So, uh, Stevie, your, your presentation, uh, again, is uh, your slide presentation is available on your website at learnfromstevenisson.com, and that's spelled N-I-S-O-N.com slash T-P-R. For those who are listening in archive, you can still receive, uh, get these, uh, this presentation. Steve has a lot of other uh, perks on his website. He mentioned a software utility that uh, does the analysis for you using candle charts. And I guess, Steve, you uh, obviously are, you've got your hands in many pies, and I, I would love to explore uh, how deep that pie goes. So. Uh, Jim, what do you think of uh, what uh, the market's doing today and how you would relate the market to candle charts? Well, interestingly enough, uh, based on today's market activity, and uh, some of the folks in the chat have been uh, raising the point, um, if you look at today's uh, market activity, it's actually telling you um, that there is a, uh, a, a pause in the market. Uh, there is a doji forming um, on today's activity. Uh, we actually uh, saw that earlier in the day. It was probably around 10 o'clock Central Time. Um, we had indicated that if this market starts to fall back and bounces by the end of the day, it'll be a doji, and that's going to signal a top. And now, Mark, you know, and most of the listeners know that I also use, um, you know, uh, a bunch of other indicators such as moving averages and whatnot. And one of my favorite moving averages is the 34 period moving average. And that doji is going to be on today's activity actually occurred right at the 34 period moving average. Um, so it, it, when you start adding multiple indicators together and you combine that with uh, candlesticks that have meaning behind them, it's the equivalent of somebody getting on a loudspeaker and saying, hey, wake up, something's going to happen here and you need to be prepared for it. Yeah, and when we come back, also, Steve, I want to ask you one question. Thank you for providing it to me. What are some of the common mistakes about candlesticks, and how do you and others at uh, candlecharts.com use candlesticks for your training or investing? We're going to hold that question till we get back. We're going to break. Stay tuned. Power Trader Radio will return in a moment. 
KBS News, I'm Pam Coulter. It's going to take a long time Mark, to fly out okay. from Hurricane Irene. It's like five feet inside of water. Inside hey, Frank, can you hear me? Everything's underwater. No, I can that woman you. Okay, so I remember the area. The River surged over its banks, flooding homes and businesses. <laughs> President Obama will visit the city on Sunday. In Maryland, Baltimore Gas and Electric has restored power to about 80% of its customers. WJZ-TV reporter Andrea Fuji says the utility is getting a lot of outside help. A crew from Chicago is now joining workers from across the country, including Alabama, Minnesota, and Florida. VGE first feeds them a hearty meal before they try and get the more than 100,000 Maryland homes and businesses back online. And it's a dangerous job. All told, they'll be replacing 5,400 power lines many which are live wires. There are still plenty of outages, including more than 360,000 homes and businesses in Connecticut. President Obama is planning a major speech on job creation yeah, next no, week. Yes, Bill Bill Jackson says he's not getting to choose the date on Capitol Hill. President Obama asked Speaker Boehner and Majority Leader Harry Reid today for permission to address Congress on jobs and the economy next Wednesday. Boehner wrote the president back this afternoon saying respectfully no. Since that's the first day, the House is back from August recess. Boehner says they can accommodate the president's request next Thursday instead, which would allow time for Congress to authorize the speech. Hey, Julian, said there would are be you calling him to the weapon or talking for me? Sweep of the no, I'm using the headset. The nation's deteriorating infrastructure is causing oh, so a exactly deadly how you're problem in here? cities. Okay. So we don't have to call it turning street uh, and uh, okay. fences into objects Say for again? of electricity. CBS's you Cheryl okay? Atkinson. Yeah. No one tracks the contact voltage injuries. Uh, deaths. It's down great. It's not like uh, 19 in deaths in 13 states since the early 1990s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a problem most that. people don't know about. It sporadically happens, and it can be prevented if power oh, companies Frank, and utility cities will just check these metal street lights from time to time and see if there's an electric problem. You can hear the full report on tonight's CBS Evening News. The Justice Department is suing to stop the planned AT&T T-Mobile merger. Officials say it would result in less competition and higher prices for consumers. CBS News and CNET technology analyst Larry Maggot. One public interest group referred to the idea of a merger between AT&T and T-Mobile as Ma Cell, hearkening back to the term Ma Bell that was often used to refer to the AT&T monopoly before it was broken up in the 80s. Barry Bonds will not face a retrial on some charges stemming from the federal probe of the use of performance-enhancing drugs in Major League Baseball. Three charges of making false statements have been dropped against the seven-time MVP. A jury hung on those charges. Bonds will be sentenced on obstruction in December. On Wall Street, the Dow up 53 points today. This is CBS News. Now, Power Trader Radio continues on PowerTraderRadio.com. And welcome back, folks. Uh, this is Jim Cash, and uh, if you're just joining us in the uh, second hour here, you've missed out on a tremendous amount of information uh, from our uh, guest, from Steve Mason. And uh, we're going to get right back to that. I'm going to post in the chat, if you're just coming in, the link to get over to the live webinar. So uh, you'll definitely want to do that because Steve is presenting us with a lot of very valuable information. Uh, Steve, before we left, uh, Mark had asked, uh, what are some common mistakes uh, about candlesticks? And then the second question was, how do you and others use candlecharts.com uh, or at candlecharts.com use candlesticks in your trading and investing? Oh, good, great questions. Uh, I'm going to look at slide 20 now. And one of the things that we've found is that, uh, you know, since I revealed candlesticks, they've become sort of, they become so popular that uh, they become kind of g generic. And so there are, you know, there's a lot of information out there. Unfortunately, a lot of it is wrong, <laughs> dangerously wrong. So we're going to go through some of the common um, mistakes. And actually, what we've done at our firm, at our shop, is we have a slogan. We, we call them missing candlesticks, candlestick training the right way. Uh, because, and it's a real compliment to you because, you know, you're out there educating the traders and investors. And that's so important, as shown in the cartoon I had on, uh, on slide 21. Uh, there, there's two really important components. It's one, making sure you get it education. Uh, to me, trading or investing in the market is like going to a bad neighborhood. You don't want to go there alone. So your best ally is education. And just as importantly is having the right information. So that's what we're here for, to uh, you know, correct some of the common mistakes. And we have this other cartoon made up shown on slide 22. 
you must learn to properly use the tools. As I mentioned before, it's not only seeing what a candlestick line looks like, what we, uh, like we discussed a doji, it's fine, you know what a doji looks like, but what do you do with it? For example, a doji in the middle of a trading range, to me, that is not important. Doji are better if they confirm a uh, resistance area. So, for example, uh, uh, just recently, in fact, uh, on, in the market, and let me just get to the uh, right slide here. I'm just jumping between the slides here. On slide number 28, you know, one of the questions I'm asked, were there any reversal signs in the market? recently and as we see on slide 28 with the Dow, the Dow Jones transport uh, on the weekly chart and I'll look at daily and weekly and I, I like looking at weekly you get a longer term sense of the direction so on this weekly chart here we have a resistance area in place since May and just as you would have a resistance line uh, on a, a bar chart so you have a resistance line on the candlestick chart and confirming that resistance a few weeks ago right at the highs on the transport index was a doji. And this is what I look for in our own trading, setting up uh, a trade based on the candlestick signal, confirming a Western signal, or the candlestick signal being successfully tested. So let me show you, you know, exactly how we do that here rather than just doing it, uh, doing it uh, verbally. So as I mentioned before on slide number 23, because the candles use the same data as the bar chart, we that means any Western indicator can and should be used on the candlestick chart. In fact, this on slide number 24, uh, a few years ago, Active Trader Magazine did an interview about me, uh, of me, and what I liked was, not, I didn't come up with the title here. They came up with the title, Steve Nissen, Helping East Meets West, and I was so glad they did that because this synergy, this combination of Eastern, that is candlesticks and Western indicators, what I mean by Western indicators, moving averages, trend lines, uh, you know, whatever Western indicators you currently use, uh, even for, you know, uh, uh, like the arms index, it doesn't matter what you use, we could add candles to them. So here, for example, we have what's called in the on slide number 25, where the white real body is wrapping around a small black real body, shown in the red box, the red rectangle. That's called a bullish engulfing pattern. And once again, the simple beauty of the candlesticks, this white real body is showing us that the bulls are taking over from the bears. All right? And what's extra powerful about this is that it was confirming a support level shown by the blue dashed line. All right? So now let me show you how uh, it's funny, we mentioned the Nissan Candle Scanner before the software. Let me show you how we set up our own trades. Uh, and we actually use the Nissan Candle Scanner as our first step. But before we do that, I've made references to the hammer. And I want to show you visually what it looks like, because we're going to discuss it in a little bit more detail when we talk about setting up our own trades. So we're now looking at slide number 26. And uh, the hammer, the market needs to be in a downtrend. We have a small real body. That's the rectangular portion be black or white, near the top end of the trading range, we really need a very long lower shadow. All right, we want a lower shadow that's long to show us the market sold off and then rallied to close at or near the highs of the session. So this is the definition of a hammer. Now, one of the things you can do with most but not all candlestick signals is could use a, you can use a candlestick signal as support or resistance. So as shown by what I just highlighted uh, in the hammer on slide number 26, the low of the hammer becomes potential support. What that means if you buy in the hammer, your stop should be under the low of the hammer. But let me show you how we use this concept of the hammer as support. And a lot of the candlestick signals, we do the same thing, the bullish engulfing pattern, the piercing pattern. Let me show you how we use it. So, what we first do, uh, we're looking at slide number 27 now. So uh, we use our Nissan Candle uh, Scanner. It's actually called Nissan Candle Scanner software. We scan through the S&P 500. We narrow down. I look for hammers and engulfing patterns. We then have a list of maybe you know 10 or 15 markets that have a. Uh, in this case, I was looking for a hammer. So you could see Nissan bull hammer I just highlighted, and so. We now see this market, and again, I hit the market because it's not important, but 
Now I know there's a hammer based on the candle scanner or the candle finder. Uh, so now what I do is we have a hammer. I could buy that hammer if I want to, but a lot of times what happens with the hammer is the market will come down and test near the hammer's low. So what we do is shown in step number two is we will set up an alert in all your charting platforms. By the way, our candle scanner works on a free charting platform. Okay? The, the charting platform it works with is free. The candle scanner, there is an investment in it, but the charting platform is free. Uh, so a lot of traders will use the candle scanner on the free charting platform based and then have their own charts, you know, based on whatever you know broker firm they use, online broker they use. So your your uh, package, your um, software will, I mean, I'm sure, be able to set up an alert. So what we do is we have the hammer, that's step one. Now we know there's a hammer here. What I do is set up an alert anytime the market gets near the lower half of the hammer, I'm circling that now in the yellow, I get alerted that the market is near the support area. Then I actually look at an intraday chart to see if there's a bullish candlestick signal. Uh, but the point is, in this market here, we had this low tested twice, and we actually wound up with a bullish engulfing pattern. And what's really good about doing this, if you're buying, now let me clear all this up to make it a little, a little easier to see. Uh, if you're buying near the lows here, that's your risk. Rather than buying it over here, I'm showing with the arrow, okay, and your risk being to the low of the bullish engulfing pattern, you're now buying down near the lower shadow, and your risk is shown here in that second arrow I drew, which is much, much, much less. So in this case, if the market closed under, I'd say, 473, we'd be out of the long position. But that's, this is how we set up our own trades. We use the candle scanner uh, to find the potential candlestick signals, like a hammer or a bullish engulfing pattern. Then we'll set up an alert any time the market gets near the low of that candlestick signal. Now, uh, Frank is uh, active in chat, and he's actually uh, commenting. There's a lot of people. We have two chats going on. One chat uh, I'm monitoring, the other chat Jim is monitoring in. And the conversation that's going on in the chat that I'm monitoring, it represents pretty much day traders. Uh, Frank, uh, you're, are you there with us, Frank? Yes, I'm right here, Mark. Uh, Frank is from Stock Guy 22 has a, um, an audience of 40,000 people that are following him. Uh, Frank, you, uh, you've been on our show several times, and the people who know you know you're, you're, they respect you, and uh, you are an avid follower of candle charts, and you all the time um, to talk about Steve, and you pr uh, talk so highly of him, and, and, and Steve has um, <clears throat> been with, in the last hour, he's been explaining the candle charts. Can you go ahead and uh, relay the questions that are coming up uh, to you, your traders, and, and ask him some of those questions? Yeah, sure, Mark, I'll try it. First of all, thanks for putting this on, because I think it's a, it's a great way for traders who, who are just learning candles or using any other type of uh, charting to really focus in on this, because it does work. I've made a lot of money over the years uh, using the uh, candlesticks. I've uh, taken uh, uh, Steve's classes, uh, live uh, seminars. I've got his... Uh, I've got old VHS copies. I don't think they even make them anymore. <laughs> the Smithsonian <laughs> wants to talk to you. I still have two Frank. <laughs> well, they're actually signed. They're signed by you, so they're going to be worth more. I can't it doesn't take up. long to sign and make an X, right? <laughs> <laughs> make an X. You're too funny. But, uh, yeah, all this stuff that he's, uh, he's touching on is just touching the surface of candles and how powerful they really are. And we even saw, like we were talking today with, uh, with Jim and... Uh, and I'm assassinating a group about the doji that are formed on, in the markets. And it is perfect exactly what, the, what Steve said, the fact that you just want to be cautious during those times and just to make sure that you know that there's indecision. Uh, I love the patterns that I love, Mark, and that people ask about a lot, like which ones you like or what do you use. The exact ones that he was showing there, those tweezer, tweezer bottoms, we call them a little bit different, and we use green and red, but it's the same... Uh, pattern, same format. We lo I love to use tweezer bottoms. Uh, I should get the Steve to patent tri-tip bottoms and quad-tip bottoms because those we find are even more powerful when you keep confirming a low or a high. We actually used it uh, on uh, a euro trade that we had done. 
back in early May where we kept bouncing into resistance and doing a lot of those, uh, those um, uh, tweezers that were forming. So yeah, definitely this is uh, fantastic stuff. Those of you that, that don't know candles or that know them but uh, don't know them as well, you really need to pick up some more of uh, Steve's uh, uh, packages of information because you'll learn a lot. It'll save you a lot of money and you'll make a lot of money from it for real. Yeah, that's an important point that you pointed out, and I want to illuminate that a little bit uh, deeper, and no pun on the illumination. The um, day traders uh, tend to be more sensitive to the day-to-day -day change of a stock. Minute to minute. Minute to minute. <laughs> where a um, spread trader, a long-term spread trader, is more concerned about where an option is going to expire on expiration above or below that price. And Steve did a very good job pointing out that pattern of uh, the turning the support and resistance lines, and he just showed a, a, a turnabout uh, on a support level being reached. And uh, for those who cannot see this uh, chart, I uh, implore you to go to Steve's site and get these charts and look what he was actually talking about. And Steve, are you going to make available the, your this video for people to see? The video or the slides? Uh, both. Okay. Uh... The slides, I, yeah, I, I guess so. I, I assumed you were doing the video, but oh, we, we'll do the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think I forgot to record this. Oh, yeah, I hope you did it. Yeah, I forgot to start the record button. I'll get so, it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, we can discuss that. You know, maybe we can include that with the uh, with the slot with the charts as well. You mentioned uh, one of your books, which is beyond uh, candle charts. What what is, what do you mean by that? Beyond candle charts, uh, there's actually strategies. Well, first of all, we just I did a little bit more um, nuances, uh, but there are also strategies called Kagi and Renko and Three Line Break, and um, uh, so I wrote about those. But they're they're a little bit more esoteric. They're very similar to uh, point and figure charts where you don't have time on the horizontal axis, uh, and that's why the title of the book Beyond Candlesticks. Now, interestingly enough, um, you know you mentioned where you don't have time on the axis. Uh, one of the other uh, chart setups that uh, we use, uh, is, especially in the futures uh, trading, is uh, range bars. Um, and what we're looking for is patterns that develop using range bars rather than price over time. Uh, it's looking for specific amounts of, um, uh, of a movement within a range. And one of those ranges, uh, I'm sorry, on that uh, chart, uh, we actually still de uh, deploy the candlesticks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what it does, it doesn't give you a wick, of course, because it's looking at a full range. Um, but it does give you the full uh, body of the candle. And at a very fast glance, you're able to see bullish or bearish formations on those candles. Um, so again, you know, it, there's a lot to this whole candlestick uh, theory and, and the application of it. And it actually does extend well beyond uh, just the time and price. Right. I mean, uh, Forex traders use them on tick charts. Uh, and it's interesting you mentioned futures because back when I revealed candles in the 1980s, I was working in the futures research department. And remember, in the 1980s, when you, you didn't trade equities, you invested in equities. So uh, the first people to pick up candlesticks were the futures traders because those were the ones who were in and out of the market. You know, equity trader, bond traders were, you know, buy and hold. So the, for, uh, the futures market, the floor traders uh, picked up, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, the candles very, very quickly, the futures traders, and then in the 90s, with the advent of the internet and day trading and short-term trading and equities, is when uh, the equity market really got hot, we'll play in words, hot on candles, and then over the last three years, the forex market has really taken a shine to uh, to candlesticks. So it's kind of progressed as as trading uh, became more active, uh, you know, the candles became much more popular. Now, Steve, as you get the slide up, I can't help but reflect um, on your uh, change of polarity principles. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I don't have that here, but essentially, um, it's one of my, I, I use this a lot, essentially, when the market breaks a support level, uh, old support becomes potential resistance, and if the market breaks resistance, old resistance should become support. Uh, there's some important important nuances with it. It's not as simple as that, but that's essentially the, the principle. And, you know, I came up with the term, but it's a common Western strategy. I, I love your saying you had in your book, a, le a red liqueur dish needs no decoration. 
Right, right. Yeah. I thing. spent two weeks coming up with uh, Japanese proverbs. <laughs> Uh, not only for, to make the book more interesting, but to make my seminars more interesting. Because, look, I gave I, I give seminars. I, I scaled back on it, uh, and I'll give a little background on that in a minute or two. But I would do seminars at the end of the trading day when the institutional traders were exhausted. You know, I'd go into the shops at 4:30 because I live in New Jersey, so I do custom seminars. I'd go into New York. Uh, this was pre you know internet, pre web stuff, and uh, they were exhausted. So. Uh, not only did I have to give them valuable information so they had me back year after year, but I had to make the seminars really entertaining. So I throw in Japanese proverbs and, and stuff like that and cartoons and jokes. and uh, so. But what happened was it, when I was doing these institutional seminars, this was you know before the general public really knew about candlesticks. There was a little talking about them. But, and it really bothered me that these institutional traders were really having like all this kind of inside information. They were making use of, of the candlesticks. And so what I decided to do is really pull away from the institutional side and start helping the retail trader and investor to learn these strategies. Because you know why not have them have the same information as the institutional trader and get so much great feedback. I'm, I'm glad I made that decision. You know, I, um, at the next statement I'm going to say, I'm going to start it off with a joke from a, a golfer's point of view. Uh, what is the most important wood in a golfer's bag? The answer is this pencil. So you can make the trick, <laughs> the score whatever you want. Uh -huh. And therefore, you actually said in your book, what is the most important price in any market? And I thought your answer was awesome, the mm -hmm. price of what you paid for the stock. Right. That, that is so right. Um, in your book, you, you, you lay out so much logic, and you lay it out so nicely. It's so easy to understand. Yet you go through this principle and you teach people how to understand candle charts and it's more than just you can you can sit down here and you can say, uh, oh, this looks good uh, kind of simple, I could get it in maybe half an hour, but the depth in this, uh, you got what, five hundred pages in your book, Steve. I mean, wow, what a right <laughs> Well if you think of the book is detailed, you should see my, my multi day videos. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um when when you were writing the book, uh, my earlier question is, how did you know to break it down, and how did you find the logical pattern to flow from one? Because it all makes sense. I don't want to reveal too much about your book without your permission, but the uh, you you started off very nicely, and it all builds academically, and it it fits so nicely. How did you know to do that? Well, I'm very good at organizing. I forgot, you know, it's been so many years since I did the book. I haven't even looked at it. If anybody ever wrote a book, you'll, you, you could empathize with me because after you write a book, you proof it and proof it so often you will never want to see it again. So <laughs> I haven't opened the book in probably 10 years. But I, I'm very good at organizing. And actually, the way I organize my, uh, my seminars now in my, my education is uh, I do it a little differently from the book. I think the book I did bullish and bearish signals. Now what I do is go from single candlestick lines like the hammer, the inverted hammer, the shooting star, or in the doji. Then I go into double candlestick lines uh, like the engulfing patterns, the piercing patterns, the bull and bear sash. And then I go into the triple one. So I progress from single candle lines to what the candle patterns that have two candles in them. Then I progress to candles that have uh, candle patterns that have three. And then I wind up with uh, windows. So I, I just been very. Uh, I have the ability to organize logically. So you I don't know where glossary. I got it from. You have a glossary on your website, right? <laughs> What's that? You have a glossary on your website. Yes, that's a good. Yep. Um, and that and that's good. We just had it on there about a week or two ago. So right, you can go to candlecharts.com and we have a glossary, a very basic glossary of the uh, the candlestick signals. Thanks for pointing that out. I forgot about that. <laughs> in in uh, you, right? People got to remember you started off hand drawing these. <laughs> yes, right, right. Impressive. So uh, I'm sure as the you saw your art and what you the principles you laid down become more technically driven and more and more uh, websites and applications providing them. Can you give an example of a couple websites or applications that have them like stock charts or Thinkorswim? They have them, uh, your candle charts in there, right? Every charting package has candlestick charts. I have yet to come across one that doesn't. And what's fascinating, and I'm real kind of flattered by this, is it's the default. Normally, years ago, it, even if they had a candlestick chart, the default would be a bar chart, and you have, the, you have a drop-down menu and pick candlestick chart. Now the default is a candlestick chart. 
And if you want a bar chart, you have to pick that. So every charting service, you go to Yahoo Finance, you go to every charting service has candlestick charts. Now, I am apologize for pulling back to your book, but in your book you had two pictures in there. In one you talked about the three mountain top, and the other one you called the three Buddha top. Mm -hmm. And um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, in, in the West we have a, and actually I'm going to try to draw here, we'll see what happens. So it's funny you mentioned about the, uh, I was mentioning about the trotting services. And uh, so years ago my son Evan, he said, you know, he says, you know, I see all the trotting services have candlestick trots on them. And I said, yeah. And he, he, he stops and thinks about it for a while and says, cool, can I get a raise on my allowance? <laughs> <laughs> you see what side of the family he follows me. Okay, so I'm going to draw here. So this is a, uh, a traditional head and shoulders pattern in the West. For those who are not familiar with it, and most of you probably are, and I'm trying to draw a neckline here. This is called the left shoulder. This is the head. And this is a Western indicator, a very popular one. And this is the right shoulder. And the reason it's called the head and shoulders is because it looks like a person's head and shoulders. Now what's fascinating is this pattern, and I did a lot of research into Western technicals also. I'm, uh, this pattern in the Western world appeared in the 1920s and 1930s. It was actually a book. Uh, there was an author called Schaubacher, and he, he predates Edwards and McGee, uh, for those who are into this stuff. But Edwards and McGee had the first book on technical analysis in the 40s, but they probably got all this stuff from Schaubacher. Anyway, this was in the 1920s, and in my research into the candlesticks with the original Japanese literature, the Japanese have the same pattern. By the way, this is called the neckline that I'm drawing the arrow. Uh, they have the same pattern. It's called the Three Buddha Pattern. And that's because in a Buddhist temple, there's a large central Buddha <laughs> that I just circled here. And there's two smaller Buddhas or two smaller saints to the left and right of it. And what's fascinating is this pattern emerged in the late 1700s in Japan. And I don't think that we in the West were, you know, found out, hey, the Japanese have a Three Buddha Pattern. We're going to call it Head and Shoulders. I think what happened is because psych psychology is truly universal, we all have the same uh, emotions, fear, greed, hope. It doesn't matter where you are, whether it's in Japan or the U.S. And what I found fascinating is that the same pattern emerged on opposite sides of the world. And you know, to me, technical analysis uh, is a universal language. It's like math. If you draw a mathematical symbol or write a mathematical symbol in Europe, does, in Europe or Japan, it doesn't matter. Everybody will understand it. And it was interesting because I did I done a lot of seminars in Europe, and I said, here I am, an American, teaching a European audience about Japanese trading techniques. And again, it just shows how universal uh, technical analysis is and candlesticks are. The Japanese have a great proverb: uh, the tone of a bird song is the same everywhere. You know, a chart is a chart, no matter where it's drawn. Oh wow, I like that. That's good. Hey, Julian, are you uh, here? Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hey, Julian, uh, go ahead and um, contribute to uh, how you use candle charts and where you found them and uh, ask any questions to the master himself. Well, before I go into how I first found out about candle six, I just want to say to Steve, thanks for, you know, participating in this program with Mark, Jim, and Frank and I. Uh, we really appreciate it and, you know, your book was actually one of the first books I read on technical analysis, so oh, you know so I feel it's an honor. <laughs> you, oh, so you're the one who bought my book. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, back uh, I I think I bought it in uh, I just got into I got into investing uh, five years ago, and I it was my yeah it was my it was actually my second or third technical analysis book book the first one I bought was you know technical analysis for dummies but <laughs> but uh, I I specifically remember or remember when I when I picked it up and before all I was doing was uh, you know I was just I was going you know use, watching CNBC and I was just you know looking for stocks that, that CNBC or BNN up here in Canada would mention and I just searched them up do like a fundamental background on them and then once I uh, once I came across your book, I started to realize, oh, these stock these stocks move during the day, right? They, I mean, they there's there's actually, 
you can actually interpret the information of just them moving, not what the companies do. And uh, that's what actually got me into, you know, r really trading. It's, it was the technical analysis books and yours being one of them. And, and Steve, uh, uh, just to point something out real quick before we go to break, Julian's only 15 and he's been doing this for five years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he's probably one of your youngest followers. Now we're going to go to break. We'll be right back. Okay. Stay tuned. Power Trader Radio will return in a moment. Have you ever felt learning how to pick good investments would require a great deal of time and energy? Candle chart analysis is a proven, quick, easy, and powerful method of success for investors who know how to use this amazing technique. Learn from Steve Nissen, the author and one of the pioneers of technical analysis. He makes the learning process fun, easy, and fast. Join him at learnfromstevenissen.com forward slash PTR. That's learn from Steve Nissen, N I S O N dot com forward slash PTR. You're listening to Trade Talk on PowerTraderRadio.com. Calling all traders, calling all traders. This is Power Trader Radio. The quest for simplicity is the holy grail of invention. Steve Nissen has brought the simple logic and illuminating arts of Japanese candlesticks to the Western world. For years, investors and traders from around the world have benefited from his expertise using candle charts without knowing who was responsible for this technique. We continue now with the founder himself, Steve Nissen. And welcome back, folks. Uh, Steve, you're just uh, you know all over the air today as the guru of candlesticks here in America. Uh, Julian, you were going to uh, pose some questions uh, for Steve. Uh, go ahead and take over the mic. Oh well, yeah. You know, before um, I guess I get into the questions, I just want to say one thing about uh, candlestick analysis and themselves. And I think it's already been mentioned in the show, but I feel I should you know emphasize really. What what really what what I love about candlesticks is you get to you get to see the actual emotion um, in the chart a lot better than you would with either a line chart or a bar chart. I mean, um, I mean, just like uh, what Jim was saying in the first hour, he was saying that with the candlestick chart, right at a glance, you can already tell the direction, and that's because you got that that third I guess third dimension. You got the color in it. You got the thickness of the bar. Got the length of the, of the the candlestick, and you know that's a lot of the times, and especially the type of trading I do because I am um, I'm geared to more of the intraday, you know, tape reading, very small time frame sort of stuff. The candlestick chart just makes it so much faster and quicker to analyze data because you just need to look at a glance and you could already see. Okay, there. Uh, we we have more green bars than red bars. You know that that's really basic, but it, it's much faster than looking at a bar chart and you're trying to gauge which are the stronger bars. Um, so you know, for especially intraday traders and not not to forget about you know uh, spread traders, uh, it, it just it just makes the analysis even more quicker, and you know that allows you to go to so many more different instruments and analyze more information. So. It's um, it, it makes the the speed of of, of pro processing you know uh, information um, from all the the markets we have to trade and derivatives on them just makes it even quicker. Right, um, candles are a really fast form of analysis. You can zip through a lot of markets quickly and see you know where you have hammers or engulfing patterns and uh, exactly. Yeah, and, and you you know, Steve, one question that I, that I, I want to ask because back in the first hour you were talking about you know the the, the doji on the the transports, uh, how that would be like a a signal to start locking in profits or start to hedge. Um, would you say that candlesticks are more are are better, uh, I guess, geared to exiting positions? Uh, as opposed to you know entering positions, or would you say they're like equal on both ends? I would say they're they're great for both positions, and it's interesting. Most of the material in technical analysis, uh, you know, is when to buy or when to e enter a market. There's very little on when to exit. 
Uh, you can use candles for both. Uh, as a general rule, what I suggest doing is if you have a candlestick signal confirming a western signal, uh, say a hammer confirming a support area, or you know, mark you like Fibonacci, so say you have a hammer confirming a fib retracement, uh, assuming it's a good risk reward, you know, we, we have something what we call a trading triad. And you know when you sign on to that uh, link that Mark and I have been giving you, you'll be automatically uh, getting our free video newsletters, uh, which you know continues your education. And one of the things you'll learn about is our trading triad. Triad is, is Latin word for three, and it's like a three-legged stool. If you take away one leg of the stool, obviously what's going to happen to the stool? It's going to fall over. So the three legs we look at, we, we comprise, our education is comprised of is candlestick charts for the early timing, the safety first trading, Western technicals, and trade management. Trade management means setting protective stops, looking at the risk reward, adapting to new market conditions, and so forth. So with that in mind, uh, if we have a candlestick signal confirming a Western signal and there's a good risk reward ratio on the trade, then we would think about doing the trade or the investment. Uh, if we have a standalone candlestick signal, like the slide I'm showing here now on number 18 with uh, the, uh, the transport that we, you were just talking about a couple of minutes ago, uh, it's a standalone candle signal. So because it's not confirming a Western signal, I would use that to exit the position. So as a general rule, if you have a candlestick signal not confirming something else, I'd use that to lighten up or exit a current position or put on a protective option trade. Uh, if you have a candlestick signal confirming a Western signal with a good risk reward trade, then one can think about uh, putting the trade on a new trade. Right. You know, I, I like to uh, incorporate uh, options into my positions. I'm more of a, uh, unlike uh, uh, what Mark uh, does, Mark Eli does a lot, he's more of a spread trader in options. I'm more of a directional trader, and I use options uh, during times where, you know, really there's no there's no direction in the market. So the doji, I'm always looking for dojis in markets, you know, to uh, to sell options basically, um, use, uh, hopefully in times where premium is high. And, um, you, you know, I, it, it's, it once again goes back to that, uh, that different, you can easily differentiate the different candle types because of the color added on the chart. Um, you know, a doji would be basically mostly black, would be only lines, so you can easily differ, uh, differentiate, you know, the, the three types of bars. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I can't praise that enough because it just makes everything so much faster. Right. In fact, one of the, you know, you mentioned options, and I'm going to show you a slide here. Uh, I think it's the next one. Let's see if it's this one. Here. So one of the things, and we're looking at slide number 34. Uh, one of the things I'm, do, I, I'm doing at my option seminar, um, the webcast one and, and live and webcast, is we have a bunch of truck challenges to really reinforce you know, what they learn at the, at the option seminar. And I, I wanted to show this because it really brings out a couple of things you have mentioned a couple of minutes ago. Uh, you know, looking at the real bodies and so forth. So here, this is actually an example of one of the uh, truck challenges, and we're not going to be able to go through all the answers to this. but uh, so. Let's look at this. So assume we're flat. Would you, would you go long a put at 1 or 2 and why? Now, what I'm highlighting with the laser pointer, this is called a falling window. This, we, we don't have time to go through this today, but it's a gap down. And a gap down becomes a resistance area that I'm showing with the, for some reason, laser pointer is not me. Let me draw a, uh, whoops, let me just draw with a line here. So this becomes a uh, resistance area. There we go. This falling window, this gap is resistance. So here that I'm circling in one, the market's at a resistance area. But getting back to your comment before about looking at the size of the real body, although the market's at resistance, the, it's still a strong session. I would be buying the put at two because look at the real body. It's a small real body. So that to me is confirming that not only is the market a resistance, but the bulls are losing momentum. And one of the things that I focus, you know, I, I, I treat bearish option, uh, sorry, bearish candle signals different than bullish ones and options uh, because if, the, if you're right in your directional trade on a long put, 
normally the implied volatility will pick up very quickly in a down move more so than in an up move. So there are some subtle nuances that I bring into uh, candles with options on bear moods. Uh, but this is a great opportunity, uh, you know, great example of looking at the size of the real bodies to see, to get the odds in your favor. You know, both times at one and two, the market's at resistance, but two, because of that small bit, real body is where I pull the trigger on the, uh, the long put position. And, uh, you know, the rest of the questions, uh, you know, we, we just don't have to, uh, time to get into this, you know, some more questions uh, over here. You know, assume you're flat, what option trades would you do? That, that I'm going to go over at the seminar. But I really wanted to uh, address the questions that I highlighted in red because it was just good timing that you mentioned about uh, looking at the real bodies and, and judging the real bodies to see how the market, uh, the psychology of the market. You know, right, and you know, it really does, it really does naturally uh, go with options as well because, you know, when, when you see a doji like that, when, uh, when the ranges start to, to come in a bit, uh, you also see the premiums uh, decline as well. So it even works together in that sense as well. Right. Um, so you could get even better pricing on the options. Um, That's what it's about. Hmm? Yeah, go Steve, ahead. You, uh, Steve, you mentioned a chart challenge. Um, some people uh, like to test their academic um, knowledge by taking tests. Do you have any um, quizzes or chart challenges that people can go to to test? No. <laughs> they're, they're just on my seminars. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, there well, you we, got to go to your seminar. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a whole, and they love it because what happens is the, the traders work with each other. Even, you know, I would say a good 80%, 90% of our audience is now uh, virtual uh, for our live seminars. We do it simulcast, and they work with each other just like we're talking. You know, they have the slides in front of them. They, they chat with each other. The people in live audience work with each other. And then we all go over the answers together to see, you know, why or why, you know, you'd buy or sell. And so they're pretty much at my seminars. Down the road, I may have a few chart challenges, uh, you know, on our website. But, uh, you know, this is like chart challenge number nine. We have about 13 of them uh, during the seminar, and they just absolutely you can see it's a great way to cement and reinforce, uh, you know, the education. Well, this is the third time Power Trader Radio in the last two years has did a visual presentation during its radio show. Usually, we only do the radio show and the audio part. So, for those out in the audience who are not a part of the visual, uh, you can uh, access those slides by going to www.learnfromstevenisson.com. N i s o n dot com slash p e t r power trade radio. Um, Steve, you you've done a wonderful job putting together these slides. I love the color, but I, I want to comment on your graphs. As you were going through those graphs, I uh, when we were building up the show, we were actually uh, I had noticed they have a far side quality to them. I, I love that. The cartoons, you mean? Yes, sir. The very. Yeah, I I have a great cartoonist. What I do is I come up with a concept. And uh, he uh, will uh, send me three or four samples, and I'll pick the best one. Actually, if anybody in your audience is interested in using him, he's, you know, you can contact Paul, and Paul will forward me the email. But uh, he's very reasonably priced and uh, a really nice guy. Yeah, so I come up with the concept, and he'll give me three or four cartoons, and we'll pick the best one. And, uh, uh, yeah, so it makes, it makes the seminars a lot more interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't think of the far side part of it. It's probably true, yeah. And you mentioned seminars, and obviously for those who are listening, they picked up that you do one for options, you mentioned Forex, futures, and you said every single market. Therefore, I assume that you're doing a different uh, webinar or seminar for each uh, specialized uh, for the, uh, the audience. Do you have a schedule that people can go to where they can find out um, about, more about this? Well, I do so. I do at the most two live seminars a year because I, I just have so many, I think as Marcus said, I have so many fingers and so many pies. Uh, I only do a couple of live seminars a year and that's why we, we sell out very, very quickly. So the one I have now planned in September is the one on focus and actually it's a brand new option seminar. I spent the last year developing it uh, and I don't have any plans yet. You know, we may do one in the middle of next year but uh, uh, you know what's great about the candles, they work in all markets and all time frames as we brought out but, uh, you know, so generally I'll do a, a seminar, a uh, general one where, you know, we talk about all the markets. Uh, the next one I might do a Forex-focused one because there's some subtle nuances with candles in Forex compared to non-Forex 
but as of now, this is the only live seminar I have planned. You you have um, on your website a custom class where they can contact you for special custom classes. And and I want to point out that uh, as you did in your uh, who is this audience for? And that's trading clubs, trading firms, and departments, uh, market managers, money managers. Now, I was a uh, CTO for um, a broker, medium-sized broker-dealer, and we all the time at the broker-dealer for our brokers would go out and find interesting individuals like you to, to come in and uh, do a workshop. So we'd book a golf course, and 1,200 brokers would come in, and they'd take this wonderful class. And I would recommend you to any broker dealer or any other big firm out there. And for if uh, uh, Options Express is listening, uh, uh, they they have a Broker Express and they're bro uh, growing brokers. You know they they have to get continuing education credits. But the Board of Standards that regulates the continuing education standards, uh, I'm sure would uh, give uh, CE credits for your wonderful class. Steve, you're amazing. I, I love your classes. I love your book. Uh, I would strongly recommend to anybody go take this wonderful seminar from this wonderful man. He's a genius. Steve, um, as you uh, as you went through, and I, I've got, got a couple more questions for you. Uh, we're going to play one more commercial because uh, we we per, uh, specially prepared uh, commercials for you. But uh, what about today's market? I asked earlier in the first hour, Jim, the question, and I saved the second half of this question for you. What about today's market? Was there anything that warned about a top today? I don't know. I was away all day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be looking. What I do is I set up my trades. After, in fact, after we do our show, I'm going to set up my trades for the next day. So I really will look at the market at, you know, tonight. Normally, I'll do it at like 8, 830. But I haven't even looked at the market today because I set up my trades. So I'm running a company, so I can't really trade during the day. So I'll set up my trades the night before. Or I'll put in uh, an order, or, you know, and then I'll, as soon as the order gets executed, it automatically also triggers a stop, so I don't have to watch it. So I really haven't been watching watching the market today. I'll look at it <laughs> after we talk. Now we have some specialized questions that we're going to hold for after the show. For those who are attending in the GoTo webinar, um, stay, if you stay after, there was, Steve's going to stay for five minutes, and after that, we got to let him go. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And but you only got five minutes to do it. Steve, um, we we had a couple things uh, slides that we did not cover. Did you want to go back and, and we went? Did to, we not? Let's see. Okay. Uh, I think we didn't do uh, thirteen. Let's see. In twenty six, we did thirteen. That's the one which showing all the firms I worked for, and uh, twenty six. I think we did do the hammer. I think we covered. Okay. Pretty much the most the most important is I really appreciate you uh, keeping track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I think we covered the, the the more important one, so that's fine. And if we missed any, it was really minor. But the main thing is we you know we 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 showed how to use the candles and what the real bodies mean and and so forth. And actually, one of the things that I should bring out, and I forgot who mentioned uh, the the importance of the real bodies. Another common, uh, I don't want to say misuse, but uh, an, an underuse is our eye goes immediately to the real body, but shadows are also really important. So if you have a candlestick line, yes, say it has a tall white real body, but say it has a very long upper shadow, that kind of mitigates the bullishness of the white real body. So the Japanese say like the right hand helping the left, so it is with the real bodies and shadows. So you know we should analyze the real body. We saw a doji or a lack of a real body means the market's tired. But we also saw that the hammer with that long lower shadow is showing us that the market is rejecting lower levels. So I just wanted to bring that up because that was kind of in the back of my mind in one of the uh, comments before. You know, we have another uh, name <clears throat> for those, uh, for the hammers and, and the ones with the, uh, the long wicks, as I call them, uh, Steve. Um, for example, at, when they're at the bottom of a chart formation, uh, we call them buy tails. And mm -hmm. when they're at the top of the formation, uh, we call them sell tails. Uh, because generally speaking, those hammers, when they're formed that way, um, you know, they're they're telling you that there's just no more momentum to push that, uh, push the market, you know, or that particular stock uh, up above and try to get a close, you know, uh, showing the continued momentum. Right. And you know, so again, it, the interpretation of the wicks becomes critically important if you're going to try to read market activity for that particular period that the candle represents. Right. If you have a candlestick line, like you know, a very long lower shadow, whether you call it a, a buying area, or I forgot the phrase you used, Mark, or a hammer, 
you know, the market's bouncing back. There's one of two reasons why it's doing that. Either there's a lack of, um, uh, lack of uh, uh, supply coming in, all right, the supply is drying up, or if there's a lot of supply, the only thing that makes this a long lower shadow is there has to be more demand. So either of those are potentially bullish, um, you know, indications. And, you know, if I could add one thing to what's, like, inside the candle, for example, in a hammer, if you think about, like, someone who actually uh, has a large position tied into the market, say, short, uh, like we had this, uh, you know, uh, this move down basically since the beginning of August, on the FOMC day, uh, you know, a hammer basically is where you see a market uh, dumping and dumping to uh, basically new lows, and then usually in the later half of the session, we see a ramp up all the way and to close near or at highs. And really, if you're short, for example, and you saw your position, oh, we're getting lows, but in the same day we went from, you know, we're, we're really making it into this position to a complete reversal, psychologically, you know, that that will uh, that will rattle a few traders, and that's what we saw basically at the low of August today, uh, this month. Uh, we we had a hammer. That's really what we saw. We saw the big breakdown on the initial reaction of FOMC, and a huge ramp up uh, into the close. And that you know uh, that move there, I think, um, is what what you know candlesticks really really show. It shows uh, it not only shows. Uh, the patterns, but also can show the actual emotion behind the traders uh, and how they would react to something like that. Easy, during the comment. We got a break for a commercial. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Power Trader Radio will return in a moment. What does it take to be a successful investor or trader? It's the ability to pick the right time to enter and exit any market. Learn how to do this directly from the candlestick master himself. Steve Nissen, the author of Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques. Register at learnfromstevenissen.com forward slash PTR. That's learnfromstevenissen, N-I-S-O-N, dot com forward slash PTR. Profit is the result of risks wisely selected. This is Power Trader Radio. And we're back. And Julian, I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, no problem. I was basically done. I was just I just wanted to point out, you know, that really the candlestick, it shows you the whole, you know, movement of the whole players. And if you actually look back, I'm, uh, at every major bottom this year, um, they were all the same type of pattern except uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the unfortunate Japanese earthquake. We saw it. Uh, Mid-April, we saw, actually it was a, uh, I think they're called, uh, it was a gravestone, it was a doji hammer, uh, and we saw it in June, and we saw it in August. Would, would the series of those candles put together be called a tsunami? <laughs> 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 All right, I couldn't resist, sorry. <laughs> now, Steve, uh, do you have any um, other books that you're going to be working on? No, no, all my newest information is on our video resources. Uh, but no, no new books. Uh, you know, you can, I could just pack so much more information on a video than I, I could with a book. And the nice thing about the video is what people, um, when they get the video, they also have the ability, we give them my secret email address so they can ask me questions, uh, you know, um, down the road. So uh, no books. <laughs> and you've also figured out, I imagine, after doing all of your live presentations, uh, that uh, we traders have the attention span of a gnat. So giving us video presentation that we can rewind and then you know, right. you on is yeah. a little bit more helpful. Yeah, in fact, we've recently uh, converted. We have DVD. I, I've, I've gone through the progression of books to VCR to DVDs, and now we're putting everything on demand. One of the uh, uh, presentations you put together was a really interesting combination, which is candlesticks and psychology. Beautiful married, uh, the, marrying those two principles together. That was wonderful. Um, that presentation that you have, is it? How do, can people get that presentation? That was just a live seminar. Oh, and that yep. was recently too, right? In July. Uh, we. Uh, I think I'll so. have to take. I have to take a look. I have to take a look. I don't think uh, it may have been a webcast, 
I, I didn't do a live in-person one on that topic. It might have been a webcast. Now, Jim, in, in, in another episode, was telling me how the emotion of the investors out there, the psychology of them, they're just looking for confidence. And I was having a conversation with Julian yesterday, and Julian was saying that he loved the ability that he can go to the candle charts and he can re-get the confidence to stay in a particular trade. And because of that, he's, he's, he's been able to make profits where he would have exited early because he, he sees the candlesticks, like you said, confirming some of his Western technicals that he's, he's uh, following also. Right, right. And one of the things that uh, I picked up in the literature, the Japanese literature, because the Japanese use Western technicals, so all the books I had translated had Western technicals plus candles. And what they do and what successful traders and investors do here is they use candlesticks as the final confirmation to either pull the trigger or not pull the trigger. So they could have, say, uh, the Western indicators lined up, but if they don't get, and we saw this before, we had a resistance area, but we had a tall white candle at the resistance. I wouldn't be selling it there. If we had a doji or a small wheel buy at the resistance, I would be selling it. So we could use the candles as the final confirmation, and that's why candles don't replace what your listeners and viewers are doing now. They just give you that extra confidence, that extra layer of confidence to know if they should pull or not pull the trigger. And you know, uh, in part with you know giving confidence to stay in a trade, and it was in it was the, it was in one of your slides, not one of the most uh, a few of your slides, uh, that you know it also the candles can also help hint you know times to get cautious. And uh, just giving a, another example is really uh, what I was saying with the hammer before. That the FOMC day this August, that that hammer would for all the shorts was kind of a you know a cautious to either, uh, signal to either hedge or start scaling out. Right, right. What's the saying? Bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. So you know, there's times to stand aside. Yeah. Now, Frank. Uh, Frank. Hey, Mark, was... Mark and Steve. I want. Uh, Mark and Steve. I want to just comment on something now uh, because uh, I know we're coming up to the end. Uh, I just wanted to thank you first of all for putting this on. You guys know that I haven't heard Steve before. It's a real privilege to have him uh, talk here tonight. But someone asked me today a really good question. They said, "You you already do pretty good with trading. You understand candlesticks. Why do you even go to to uh, an event like tonight? And whether it's a paid event or a free one like tonight, uh, it's a big privilege to have uh, Steve uh, chat with us tonight." And if, if candlesticks were like, you know, Steve, uh, how Mark said, uh, he's like the prophet, but for you guys that are uh, younger, if, if candles were rock and roll, uh, Steve's like the uh, Elvis Presley and the Rolling Stones uh, of it. And if, it's, uh, if you're into uh, hip hop, he's like the Jay-Z. So really, whenever I come to one of these uh, events, I always write down and I keep notes, what did I learn tonight that I didn't know yesterday? And tonight I actually learned about protecting with the options, and I know that's Steve's uh, next uh, big uh, seminar. So I wrote that out, and also what we were talking about earlier, about the doji that I formed today, and just to keep cautious on that. So you guys should always do that, whether you go to a paid seminar, a uh, free one, always write out what you're learning uh, from this stuff, and I uh, just wanted to point that out. But I, again, thanks, uh, Mark, Steve, for putting this on. I think uh, great uh, pleasure for us. I appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah. At our seminars, very quickly, we give out what we call our WOW worksheet, so people could take notes on, you know, those WOW moments that they get at the seminars. You know, uh, I noticed that your book has been translated into six different languages. That is amazing. Actually, it's probably 11 by now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. You have an MBA in, in finance and investment? Right. Uh, Jim, Jim is not a fan of the MBA, but I tell you that... <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm MBA too, but uh, you know, one of the things that academics tend to do is they try to make their material very academic, and you did not do that in your book. You made it so. I, again, I, I want to comment on how well you laid that out. It was amazing uh, for me to read your book, and I, I enjoyed it very much. Thanks. Matter of fact, um, my I've been trying to get my kids in uh, who are you know. My youngest is uh, 13 to read your book, 
because I, I think your book is going to be very important to their uh, college portfolio because I'm going to make them invest their own portfolio. <laughs> That's very flattering. Thanks. Well, with that, folks, uh, I want to extend a very special thank you to Steve Neeson for uh, being with us tonight. Steve, I'm sorry, I keep botching your name. It's That's tonight. okay. That's um, no big deal. <laughs> uh, I apologize for that. In any event, uh, Steve uh, Neeson uh, has been with us uh, throughout tonight. If you haven't uh, done so, uh, go over to his uh, website at uh, learnfromstevenison.com uh, forward slash PTR, and he'll send you some slides, and he'll get you on his uh, own internal mailing list. Uh, he does not give out uh, your email address to anybody else for any further solicitation. Julian, Frank, and everybody else who joined us tonight, I want to thank you all very much. We will see you back here same time, same place next week. We hope you enjoyed this week's Power Trader radio program. To hear today's show, log on to www. Hey, guys. This is Mark. Hi, hey, Mark. Hey, we're after, we're after the uh, show, and we're not broadcasting, so uh, we are still in the GoToWebinar. So, okay. Uh, Frank, why don't you go ahead and take the uh, questions to Steve. We've only got five minutes. Frank? I yeah, I'm right here. Just uh, oh. give me a sec to, uh, to put it up. <laughs> I thought it was something you said, Mark, and Frank hung up. <laughs> no, no, I have to put, just put it on the other webinar so I don't see it, so I can see the questions. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm great, back, great webinar, by the way. So, guys, those of you that are in it, if you wanted to type your question out, uh, Humble was saying his favorite trading quote is, "If you don't know what to look for, you won't see. You won't see it. And if you don't see it, you shouldn't trade it." Uh, Trend uh, speculator is asking, "What do you think of Ichimoku approach in trading? If you know what that one is?" Yeah, Ichimoku is very similar to um, uh, Elliott Wave, and it's a very esoteric um, analysis. It, it forecasts time. I, I really haven't. That's on one of my future to dos, but. Um, there, there's such a small audience would be interested in it. It's, it, it's, it's too much opportunity cost for me to spend time on that. But Ishimoku, another name is Cloud Charts, and uh, I have no idea how well they work. Uh, but it's, it's very similar to Elliott Wave, and there, there are five different clouds and all that. So, uh, it's, it, it's much. It, it's a, uh, it, it, it doesn't give you the fast signals like Candle Charts does. Steve, I have a I say question. fast, I mean the early reversals. Another question is, uh, on your uh, software, do you install it on a Windows environment? Will it also install on a Mac environment? Yes, and it's actually on the free um, platform. We actually work with Ninja Trader, which is a free, free charting package. So it's a free charting package. All you do is invest in the candle scanner. You get a 10-day money-back guarantee. And you know, Paul will give you, Paul at CandleTrust.com will give you all the details, but we have lots of resources on that. Uh, and it's really easy to use. Mason has a uh, question. Do you not uh, do the Elliott Wave yourself, Steve? No. No, too much subjectivity. I think if you're going to do Elliott Wave, that should be pretty much a focus because there's, there's uh, you know, variations on the wave. You can have alternate wave counts. And I think that in itself is a whole specialty. So I don't, uh, I personally don't use it. doesn't mean it doesn't work well. I just, for whatever reason, never fell into it. Okay. Uh, Steve, I had, a, I had a question. Uh, I found with uh, using the candles, I thought I have the most success on bottoms and tops on, the, on the, and some of my biggest trades after monster moves up or down, whether it's intraday, if a stock is gapping down and continues lower, mm -hmm. or after a big move like we had in, uh, in uh, uh, after 2008 in the spring of 09, I actually went long into April when a lot of my other indicators and the candles confirmed the lows. Mm -hmm. Do you find that as well, that after the bigger moves, we have the most success with uh, candles? And I use well, it with a combination of other indicators, so I wait for all the indicators to tell me a little story, but I rely heavily on the candles and, uh, along with the other things. I find that right. works best for me. Yeah, usually if you have like a parabolic sort of move, I mean, the market can often kind of do a reverse, uh, like a mirror image just as quickly as it goes up, it can go down. Uh, so, and I, what I'll normally do is set up trades in the direction of the longer term trend. I'll look at a 20 and 50 day moving average to, to how I define trend. Everybody can define trend, you know, define trend their own way. So, if the 20 is above the 50 and both are sloping up, uh, I'll be looking to go more bullishly aggressive. I'll be more aggressive on the bullish candlestick stick signals 
than I would on the bearish ones because they're going in the direction of a major trend and usually have better profit potential. Uh, the, the ATR, the average shoot range on uh, a move in the major, in the trend, uh, in the direction of the major trend, you could have um, like three ATRs and for people familiar with that. If you're going counter trends, you should only be looking for about one, one and a half ATRs. Steve, there's two questions I uh, got in chat. Uh, Dennis, which uh, asks, which book of yours, Steve, would a new trader be best served to use, first, second, third? Let me rephrase this question. What is the chronological order somebody should buy your uh, books if they're a beginner? All right. Uh, well, I would suggest getting our volume one DVD. We have a four-volume set. It would be like day one to the full-day seminar. You can contact Paul at CalTrust.com for that. Uh, that that's my first suggestion, but if they want to get a book, it would be Japanese Calistic Charting Techniques. He went in for second book or for a second? Uh, probably the Calistic course. Oh, good. And then finally, beyond candles, I I I don't think they really need unless they're going to get into the more esoteric stuff like the Renko and three line break and Kagi. Um, we uh, next question, Steve. Do you use any pivot mythology in addition to your candles? If so, do you, do you? Use standard pivots. I don't, but one of my employees uses his pivots and candles for his trading. Now we had a comment that people could not get into this chat for because it was maxed out, which um, I find unusual. So obviously people were going to the other. We had two chats going on, one with a thousand. Uh, they both had a thousand seat. So I, um, but this one uh, obviously didn't have a thousand. So I. The ones that were bouncing out of it must have been going to that other one. So we lost a majority of our licensed uh, audience in uh, the confusion. So I apologize for that. Um, okay. Well, nothing to be done about that. We lost a thousand people. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I. Uh, any more questions? Uh, we only have one. Oh, we went down beyond our minute. Thank you so much, Steve. I, I don't want to keep you any longer than I promised. Okay. Thanks. Thanks okay. Again, Thanks, Steve. everybody. Okay. Sir. All right. We'll talk. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Pleasure talking to you. And uh, Mark, great job again. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Great question. Hey, okay. Steve, thanks, everybody. Can we do this again another time? Only if you promise we when we're supposed to get a thousand, we get a thousand. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and can we, you know what? Uh, can we do an hour or something? I mean, you know. That would be fine. Yeah. All right. Let's let's do this again, and you know we'll make sure we have the right link and all that stuff. So okay. that'll be fine, and we can use the same you know a lot of the same slides and all that if you want. Thank you so much. Good. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Bye, thanks for all your help. Okay. Thanks for those great commercials and all that. Okay. Okay. You are. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Frank. Uh, thanks, Mark. It was great. Thanks, Julian. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Uh, see you later, Frank and Mark. <laughs>